Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft. Chapter five, our holster looks good. In chapter four, we dropped in that consistent chisel line. That's gonna give us a gorgeous stitch line. Gonna make it look just like a machine stitch. Now in chapter five, we're gonna add a little glue and then we'll glue this together as we hand sew it. At that point, we're ready to wet form. Two chapters after that and this beautiful holster is done. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. So let's step over here, quickly add a little bit of glue. Now with our holster, we're just adding some glue here to keep this together when we pop out our stitch line. So again, just like the previous side, I'm going to rough in about a quarter of an inch with my sandpaper, add contact cement here and here, and then this will adhere together as we sew. And there we go, roughed easy enough. No, no roughing over here needed, flesh side up there. All right, so just like the first, I'm gonna hang this over the edge or right on my edge. I'm simply going to brush some glue off, about a quarter inch wide is really all I need. And there we go, plenty of glue there. Now again, just like our first side, I wanna be careful when I bring my brush back across because I don't wanna get glue along my edge that's going to affect our die. So let's do this. Let's step over here and add our temporary stitch line in. Now with our glue, our glue is not really going to be strong enough to hold this, hold this where it is. It's pretty close, but particularly if we bump up in weight on our liner or on our exterior. So really, I'm just going to butt that together, get that flush, feels pretty good, and I'm just going to drop in a clip there. Not a clip that's got so much strength to it that it's going to ding my leather. And then on our pony, there we go. We don't have to go very tight there. All right, we're ready to go. Now, saddler stitch. This is a back and forth stitch, easily done. So with our needles, couple of points, good hand sewing needles. These are John James and I love them. Nice big eye, no sharp point. We're hand sewing, we don't need a point. Secondly, wax thread. Now with this, I'm going to go about eight times my length because we're going more horizontal than we are vertical, all right? So first hole, there's our marked hole. That's the first at the top. I'm going to take one needle. Let's see if we can find that hole. We're going through five plies here. So what I can do is come in from the back, there we go, and open that hole, all right? So first hole, one needle. Now you notice I've got a needle on both ends and I've got these choked up a little bit. Therefore, as I move through the project, I can pay out thread, simply move that out as I need to, so therefore I don't have to pull way out on each thread. All right, next step, I'm going to go to my next hole. Let's find that, there we go. Look at that, that moves right through there. Easily, our holes are lining up. Now, typically for me, what I'm going to do is drop both needles through that same hole. Now, much to popular, much against popular belief, I do not want to sew down and back. I can. But the problem is, as I move along this, I'm pulling left and right, left and right. I'm not getting even tension. But the bigger problem is, every hole coming back, I run the risk of splitting my thread. So therefore, we're going to do two needles at one time. No stress over splitting a stitch in any hole. But five ply, a little hard to get through. So I can take my thread, I'm going to hold down, push the thread with my thumbs. There we go. Now I can push those needles through. Easy enough. Let's pull those out and we've got a good thread. Okay, we are not going to pull extremely hard here because this is just a temporary thread. All right, let's find our next hole. There we are, lining up nicely, coming through the back. Now let's do one more and then there is another way we can do this if you don't have a lot of strength in your hands. Going through this much leather takes a little bit. So what I can do is I can load Let's get that second hole opened up. There we go. I can run one needle through and I can pull that back. Now with my other side, holes open, I can run that through and I don't run the risk of splitting that thread. Now let's pull that down. All right, maybe the next hole or so, I can remove my clip and I'm gonna sew right down to my end. All right, getting down to our last hole. Now on this hole, I'm simply going to take one needle, going to come through the face, and on the back side, one needle, next hole, and I'm just going to come through the back side. There we go. 
Now, later on, we'll do the same thing because that'll allow us to bury our knot down in there. But for right now, doesn't need to be pretty, just hold it together. All right, so square knot, right over left, circle around, and let's draw that down in there. Okay, now left over right, circle around, and we'll draw that down in there. Okay, very good. So let's cut that off, and we're gonna step over here and do a little sanding on our edge. One point I wanted to make and didn't while we were hand sewing, our first thought a lot of times is why can't we just wet this, fold it over and sew it? Because the biggest problem here is we do not ever want to sew leather wet because that thread is going to sink down into the leather and it's going to look terrible. It will be very inconsistent. In fact, when we hammer down our stitch line, the leather will actually cover some of that stitch. All right, secondly, we're simply going to sand and slick. Now, you could take five, six, seven levels of sandpaper and get that down to where it's got a glass smooth finish. We're not gonna go that far. If you wanna do that, absolutely you can do it. All right, so I've just got some of our sandpaper. This is 220, it looks like ZZO, but it's 220. And I've just glued that onto a dowel. So now I can get into my inside corners and I can work along my edge. So I'm going to use a combination of my dowel and my flat sandpaper just to get a good flat edge on this. There we go. Okay, that looks good. We're pretty smooth and even all the way across our holster. So now we're going to bevel. And what's going to be easiest, I'm just going to take two pieces of scrap, and I'm going to lay those down so, again, my bow doesn't give me a problem. Now I can lay this down, and I'm not trying to bevel at an angle. So I'm going to take a number two bevel because we're really not trying to take off that much leather. And let's just work our bevel around. I'm going to do both the welt side on the back and the welt side on the front. And there we go, okay, bevel looks good. Now let's jump over, we've got a bit of a mess here, but that always happens when sanding and beveling. I'm gonna take some simple water. Now we could wet form this and slick our edge, but I don't want that, I don't want my leather that wet. You'll see, what we're gonna do here is just a little water. Now again, at this close to wet forming, it's not a real issue if I get water draining across, but still, I do wanna avoid that. So let's get this wet across the edge, front and back. All right, there we go. Now, with a slicker, rarely do I have a slicker that's gonna go up to half of an inch. So I'm going to use my shank. Well, actually I could use my shank, but the problem is, is if I'm slicking along and I lean a little too much, I'm gonna get a line in here. So let's jump over to the other end and I'm going to slick front side and then back side. All right, we've got our edges smoothed down. So now I'm gonna jump over to the main part of my, uh, my, my burnisher, and I'm simply going to work across my edge. Now right here, pressure, not the point. I don't wanna push this so much that I get a lip along the front or the back. I'm just going to smooth that edge, try to get that as smooth as I can. All right, looks like we're pretty slick. Now, again, I'm gonna take that into the tool, and though I have just added maybe a little too much pressure there, we've got a bit of a lip, so all I'm going to do is smooth that back down. All right, there we go. Well, that holster looks good thus far. Okay, so I've got a pitcher of water here. This is a little bit easier than a larger tray to soak this in. That can be a mess. So let's just drop this in our water, and we're gonna let that sit with a liner on that. Let's give that just about a minute. All right, let's bring this out. Very good, okay. Nice and pliable, but we also, we need to be a little careful here because this will take any impression, fingernails, thumbnails, all of it. All right, so let's work that open a little bit. All right, and we're gonna take our gun. Now let's force this down in here. Now, notice right here, my rear sight. What I need to do is pull my gun back out and with my hand, I'm going to work that open a little bit so that that can slide in easily. There we go, all right, and there we are, look at that. Perfect, that just sits right where I wanted it to. My guard, my pistol, or my trigger guard is right on that welt, very good. Now, we can work this down with our fingers, but again, let's be a little cautious because we've got a surface here. We've got a tooled surface. And you can even see it's backed out a little bit across this hard bend. Not really enough to worry about, but let's don't make that worse 
by pressing out our mold. All right, so I'm going to leave this gun in here for 24 hours. Well, actually about 12 hours, then I'm going to pull it out and let it dry maybe another 24. We'll be able to feel that. Now, if you don't have a blue gun, it's no issue. Simply put your gun in a baggie and then work the gun down in there. But also too, we can save some time here by wet forming with dye. We can, it's a bit of a mess. But again, we can drop our gun in a good sized baggie and force that in there. That saves us an entire step. So say it's Christmas Eve and we've got our project is due tomorrow. We can wet form with dye, but let's give that about 24 hours. In fact, look at that. We are just right there, half inch from the end, nicely measured. All right, let's give that time to dry. We're going to jump up to chapter six, where we're going to add our dye, an antique, and a top coat. After that, we are ready to assemble this beautiful holster.